Hey everyone, this is Mike and today we are back in Final Fantasy XIV as yesterday me and my static trialed some new candidates for our static in UCOP and when we go into UCOP we of course also have the Nail Deus Darnus phase which is phase 2 of the fight which is one of my favorite phases when it comes down to all of the different ultimates and it is definitely my favorite phase in the unending coil of Bahamut. A couple of weeks ago I made a video where I talked about all of the different phases that I quite liked from the different ultimates and Nail was definitely one of those and it is probably one of my favorite ones if not my favorite if they were to change one specific thing about this fight. Now if you don't know how the whole Nail phase works I'll give you a like, quick TLDR. There's basically five dragons around the arena, each dragon does something different, one gives you fireballs, the other tries to ice you, uh, if you get two fires you die, if you get ice twice you die which is why you need to balance it out by getting hit by the fire whilst you're also getting hit by ice. There's a dragon that gives you the thunder debuff for which you need to spread away from the group. There's one that gives you doom and then there's also one that gives you the doom puddles to go cleanse that doom. And all of that is going on whilst the boss itself is also doing her stuff with for example the tank busters. But more notably the nail quotes, the nail voice lines which is pretty much the most unique mechanic in that entire fight. And it is something that I think was really cool but was also incredibly poorly implemented into the fight itself. And for that I'll give you a really small clip right here where you can see the first nail quote, very simple, this is what it looks like and yes that is literally all there is to it. There is a tiny text box on top of her head and depending on what is being said in that little text box will determine what mechanics will happen. Now of course if you've done Yukup a couple of times you know which of the mechanics are possible at what times but you still need to pay attention to the quote to see these specific words because there are keywords in those sentences or in those quotes from which you can determine what mechanics are going to be happening which will be more important later down the line into the fight or after the dragons dive in the nail phase itself but also when we go into the rest of the fight like Felro and Trio as well as the add phase because in those parts of the fight there are going to be even more mechanics attached to the nail quotes or there can also be some randomness in there if we're talking about the second part of the nail phase itself because in the first half of the phase the mechanics are sort of set like the first one is always going to start with dynamo the second one is always going to start with thermionic beam and the third one is always going to have a dive attached to it but when it comes down to the rest or the second half of that mechanic you don't know what it is and that is why you need to look at that quote. Now the way it's been delivered is something that I've never really liked and is also the reason why the majority of people that do UCOB have ACT installed to have triggers associated with these nail quotes. Basically what these triggers will do are they will read what the quote is and then Windows text to speech will basically say something like in then out or stack then in or for example something that I use for the longest of time would be dynamo into chariot or something like that. But I never really felt that happy with using these things so when we went back into UCOP yesterday I decided to do it without the triggers and I wasn't really all that happy with how we had to read all of that stuff. As I mentioned, there's that tiny text box above of the head. Whenever she's attacking the tank, her head bobs up and down. And thus the text box will also move quite a bit. If you don't want to look at the text box, you can look at your chat log. Because the boss will also say some words that appear in the chat log itself. And you can read it over there. But I don't necessarily think that either of these two things are really all that great. When it comes down to identifying what are very important mechanics, because if you fail these mechanics, you're most likely going to end up dying, so you don't really want to get hit by these. Now, when it comes down to me personally, I am a very big fan of voice acting. Voice acting not necessarily just in cutscenes, but also in fights. For example, something like Susano Extreme, which is a primal from Stormblood, is one that does this incredibly well. Pretty much everything that he is doing is being voice acted and most of the time I'm not even paying attention to the cast bars of his abilities because I know what is going to be happening because of the voice lines that he is saying. And there are a couple of other fights in the game as well where I also have this thing that I don't necessarily need to pay too much attention to what the boss is doing because I can hear what he is doing depending on the voice lines. And going into the current Savage Raid tier, I know Shiva is very old at this point, but it is still sort of relevant as the next Raid tier has not come out yet, hopefully in about two or three weeks it should be here. But Shiva has voice acting. I believe it is the very first Savage boss ever to have voice acting in there, which I thought was a really cool addition because the way certain mechanics work of her, yes, if you've done the fight a bunch of times, you'll know when those mechanics are going to happen and you won't need to listen or look at the boss because you know it's gonna happen, but it is still a really nice addition. At specific points, whenever she does the redress mechanic, 
there is always a specific thing that she's going to do. So there are three different redresses that she does. There's the one where she turns into Heidelin, during which you basically have to look away. There's one where she turns into Shiva itself as the primal Shiva, where she'll freeze the floor. And then there is also one where she turns into Hreshvelger, which is where you'll basically have to move because there's a rise going on in that point, uh, which basically is a bunch of AoEs that are happening on the place that the players are standing at that point. Point. But associated with this mechanic, outside of just her glowing body and some changes happening to the dress that she is wearing because she does have three different models, there is also a voice line attached to it. And this voice line is delivered both in voice form, it is actually voice acted, but there is also a very big bar in the middle of the screen that will also put this line up there as well in case you were playing without audio or if you would prefer to just read it instead of listen to it. There are basically three different tells. She's glowing, you have the voice line above of her head, which is in very big letters, not on a very tiny text box that is moving around as the boss is moving around. And then on top of that, it is also being voice acted. So I was a very big fan of how they handled that mechanic. And this is actually what is giving me hope as well. When we get future savage fights, when we get future ultimates, that they might do something similar as well. Because in Extreme Trials, we've seen plenty of voice acting over the years, especially, for example, in Stormblood. Very vivid in my memory still that there are quite a few primals that have a lot of voice acting involved with certain mechanics. And now them doing this inside of an actual savage fight makes me kind of hopeful that they will keep doing this trend going into the future as well. Because I do think that going back into UCOP, if they would have actually voice acted the nail quotes, it would have alleviated the fight so much more and it would have also made it so that a lot of people wouldn't even think about installing ACT and try to learn the voice quotes themselves because it's a really engaging mechanic that way and instead of just having to read the tiny text box which is quite annoying and because of that a lot of people installed ACT, listened to triggers and they never bothered to learn the mechanic because it was just very badly implemented. I think if they would have actually voice acted those quotes a lot more people would actually know what the quotes mean when it comes down to in terms of what mechanics they will translate into when those actually happen but it would also make you feel so much more immersed in that phase itself and it would really make it perfect because nail phase as it is the mechanics that are there are incredibly fun it is a whole mechanical dance that is going on and if nail would be shouting those quotes at you as well whilst all of that is going on i think it would have just been a perfect phase right now there is only that one small pain point of the voice quotes being very badly implemented and with some voice acting i think they could have really made a very big difference so that's pretty much what i wanted to talk about in today's video if you've ever wanted to go into ucop yourself it is very easy uh, to do that right now because unlocking it it's not that bad anymore gear scaling is also helping you out with the dps check quite a bit and nail is only the second phase in that fight twintania is not really super difficult either so it shouldn't take that long to get past twintania to then experience that nail phase to see what a clusterfuck of mechanics are really going on over there and then you can kind of see for yourself where i am coming from let me know in the comments down below if you guys like voice acting in these fights as well for example shiva you've probably done the normal mode at this point i'm pretty sure that in normal mode there's also some voice acting going on for me it just adds that extra layer of immersion and i do quite enjoy it in my fights but on that note i want to thank you for watching i want to thank my patreons for supporting me and i'll see you in the next one